welcome to Makers and Fixers. We're here at UCA Farnham to discuss emerging trends and issues relating to modifying, hacking and fixing products. Repair right now is um, quite sporadic, but there is a lot of information growing in the marketplace, so people can go online and get information on how to repair products. And I think that's important for two reasons. First of all, it might help them to repair the product themselves. But secondly, it also gives them access to information to give them confidence that a repair could be done. So my own example would be I had a mobile phone go wrong. I didn't feel confident repairing it myself, but at least seeing that it could be repaired through using iFixit's guide, for example, I could take it to a mobile phone repair and know they were likely to do a good job and I could trust the repair that was going to be done. So the piece of information that's going to be more important in the future is knowing where you can get those services. So where are your local repair facilities? Is it a hack space or a maker space? Or is it a local repairman who's a commercial venture that you want to go and just ask them to repair it for you? I think the most important thing of the maker movement and of hacker spaces and maker spaces is that they make people think about products. So people interact again with the product. It's not a thing that they use and throw away, it's a thing that they really um, get bonded to. And um, that uh, in itself is already very important for a circular economy. So people are more aware of the concept and more thinking about it. I think we're going to continue to see uh, a real flourishing of initiatives and ideas for specific practices within the circular economy around repairing, fixing, um, maybe some mobilisation actually, so maybe groups coming together or organisations and associations establishing that start to put pressure on producers, retailers and to open up and make it easier for these groups to, to do their repairing, fixing and making. I see the fixer movement growing and more access to community repair and skill sharing and a community level, but I do think that in, in the fixing that we do with electronics and consumer electricals, um, particularly electronics, things are going to become more and more difficult to fix at a community level. So if everything becomes so miniaturized and so small and so difficult to disassemble, we will reach a point where we have trouble actually helping people in a community setting within a three hour limit um, because it will take us so long to get into a device. And what I think we need to do is start um, coming up with more local economies of repair. So I think we need to find ways to connect people with people with the skills um, at a local level and, and figure out how we can create economies of repair where people can get paid for their skills and their services. Things are getting more and more difficult to fix. I think for most people, they're going to need to get something out of fixing a product that is more than the fixed products. If they're going to put in the time and the effort um, and gain the skill in order to be able to, to fix their, um, their kettle or their furniture, then there's got to be something that drives them to do that because otherwise just getting a replacement is, is going to be it's, it's more convenient, it's going to be a better use of their very pressed time. One of the things that we need to think about is how can we encourage people to do that by promoting a deeper sense of ownership of material things. One of the things that we've heard a lot about today is how people are far more inclined to take um, greater care of things and keep them for longer if they've had some, some participation in its production. So I think there's, there's room there to think about how we can um, encourage people to take greater ownership of their possessions. I think what puts a lot of people off is the idea that an object looks sort of scarred or tainted in some way if it's got a visible trace of repair on it. I think if we can um, bring about uh, a new kind of aesthetic vocabulary or aesthetic sensibility that celebrates these traces of an object's life, um, then that's going to perhaps really drive this countercultural shift that we need to see. The means of production is going to become more democratic at a certain level. That's already happening. And I suppose the question is what impact will that technology have on social issues? It is a socio-technical development and the cultural side of this development seems to me to be equally interesting. If we assume that the, co the cost of technology is going to come down, the number of different things that we can make is going to go up, but the closed loop is going to mean that more materials can be reused effectively and efficiently 
What is the kind of culture that we want to see within those activities? Well, it's going to be, for sure, it's going to be a local culture, and hopefully that means there is going to be more cross-generational working. And if, through technology, people are able to generate um, new ways of making and new engagements with the physical world, at the same time as reusing materials so that we're not exploiting our environment in quite the same way as we are today, then I think that would be a fantastic education. We've had an excellent day at Makers and Fixers. We've heard from many presenters. Clearly there's something starting to emerge. Have we hit the turning point where making and particularly fixing the repair of products and the modifying of products is going to grow as more of a transformational new agenda.